Today I get an opportunity to encourage every officer to fix a tiny little staging problem that I see so often in cops who carry tourniquets. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. Your host as always is John Correa and with me, your favorite former Fed, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Greenville, South Carolina. Throwing targets are lightweight, weatherproof, take thousands of rounds of shooting and make shooting fun. Pick up a set for your next range trip. Officers are in this area at this construction site, just basically deterring crime. They're on foot patrol here, making sure everything and everyone is okay. And you see them looking around and they identify a pickup truck that is in this place that shouldn't be in this place. <clears throat> so what you're gonna see here is officers are gonna walk this truck down and go investigate. Now, we do have badge cam audio from here, so let's listen in to what happens. Hey, stop hey. the door! Oh shit! Stop the fucking car! Crossfire! Hey! Stop the fucking car! Hey, are you okay? Get your turn on. Hey, hey. We need we need EMS now. EMS, EMS now. now. We have an officer shot. Officer's been shot. Officer's been shot. Surveillance footage of the construction site. You can see the officer coming towards us here. It gets a little grainy here for a second. You're gonna watch the guy just pull a gun and take a shot out of his passenger side window and hit this officer in his leg. We're gonna go back to the badge cams now and keep listening in. Hold on. You're okay, I got you. I'm putting a tourniquet. You got him? Yeah, I got him. 49, Charlie 3. We're coming to you. You got the radio. Taking you right on the bunk of it's at the top of the hill. Backing up. Hey, get that car back down here. Go higher, go higher. He's coming back towards us. Right on it. He's coming back towards us, Corey. Okay. My gun's right by you. I'm fire, shot fire! Go higher, go higher, you're below it. I'm trying, he's coming. I know you're okay, take your time. Just fuck me. Go bigger, go bigger. I'm okay, I'm not bleeding. For the other units, uh, that vehicle came back and more shots fired. The officer who was shot in the leg is going to make a full recovery. Uh, our perp sped off into the night, but not very far. You heard those other gunshots. They did end up taking this guy into custody. If you go watch the original that I've linked in the description, there's a whole section of them taking this guy into custody, and he faces a corn plethora of charges. All right, whether you're a cop or not, I wanna know, do you carry a tourniquet on your person? I absolutely do in my ankle kit every day, multiple other ones in my kit, in my car, and I recommend you do as well. But you gotta train with it. You've got to do it right, let's talk about it. So John, what we're looking at here is what's called a directed patrol. What that means is uh, there's been a spate of crimes, a spate of issues in a certain area, so they will do extra patrols or directed patrols in these areas, so obviously they've had a spate of thefts, so they're checking this construction site. The thing is, directed patrols like this rarely do you come up with anything, so they're probably surprised to actually see a truck there. Um, talking about the approach for a moment here, Odds are what they're thinking is happening here, if anything, is probably some theft, stealing construction supplies, that sort of thing. So you're not really anticipating a lot of resistance from the crook. He might flee, but you're certainly not expecting a, a firefight as a result of stealing some two by fours, you know, and, and copper wire. But that's exactly what they got. Um, well, and again, I mean, obviously when the guy starts running and then backing up towards them, it gets dangerous here in a crazy hurry. Obviously. Now, I will say this. I, I do want to stop here for a moment. This officer is in the fight getting shots on a guy who's just shot one of his partners. 
I, I, again, it's a stressful moment. Recognize that somebody else has the car lit up. You're trying to put shots on target. He's trying to put two hands on the gun while he's holding a handheld flashlight. I think this is why I recommend that police officers have a pistol mounted light and know when it's time to drop the handheld or at least stick it in a pocket or something. So then that way you can get two hands on the gun well, because right now what you need to do well is shoot well. And, and if he's got a pistol mounted light, well then he doesn't need that handheld. And if he doesn't have a pistol mounted light, he needs to be using the handheld rather than holding it like this. Agreed. I think what we need to start seeing is maybe agencies start doing drills where you have a clipboard, sight book, flashlight, whatever in your hand at the range and just emptying your hands, just getting rid of it, getting two hands on the gun. The minute your hand is on the gun, unless you don't have a gun mounted light, like you said, then you need that flashlight to eliminate what you're shooting at. But if you have a gun mounted light, you need to empty your hands before, before you even draw the pistol. So get that thing out of your hand, whatever it is, and get your gun up and get to work. Now I'll say this, that this officer needed his handheld light afterwards because his partner was shot. And so he needs to have a handheld light in his hand. So I get it, you go, wait a minute, I don't wanna necessarily drop that. Think if that light was on and it should have been on, you'd know where it is in that moment. Now let's think about the surveillance footage here for just a minute because I, I do wanna stop a moment. Okay, fine, we don't get to see much. This isn't a, a me problem. This is how they uh, released it. As you can see all these artifacts, whatever, but you saw the fired round. But the real thing I wanna see is this officer who is down and shot, you can see the muzzle blast there from him returning fire. And that's the kind of emotional fitness that, that I think is exemplary and, and everyone should strive for. Yeah, he wasn't expected to, get, expected to get shot. Like I said, they were expecting this guy to run away. He got shot and he has the, the A and Asp his attitude. He has the right attitude. He goes down and he says, you know what? No, I got something for this guy. I'm gonna stay in this fight and I'm gonna try to help stop this guy from fleeing and injuring someone else. So uh, kudos to him for that outstanding uh, mindset on his part. Yeah, incredible job by him. Let's look just a second at the other two officers. We've already talked about the one who, again, has got two hands on the gun and is trying to maintain that. Look at the officer at the bottom of the screen who is firing one-handed with his other hand down at his waist. Kind of same thing, guys. Either get that light up where you can see it. I'd really prefer you know, either a temple index or a cheek weld, something like that, a neck index, so that you can see it. Or just get two hands on the gun because shooting at something that far away with one hand, that's gonna be a tall, tall order. Now, the biggest thing that I wanna say, and I, I teased it in the intro, is he's like, oh no, I got a partner who's got a leg wound. And so I'm going immediately for the tourniquet. Now, I think it's a good idea. You can't tell how bad his uh, is. It's gonna be very difficult to see if he has major arterial bleeding here. So probably the best thing to do is get that tourniquet on and get it high and tight just in case. Won't harm his leg or anything like that. It'll just hurt like heck. But the bigger thing I see here is look at the strap. His windless strap is closed. And so in this moment where his partner may have 30 seconds to a minute tops of blood left if he's got a major arterial bleed, you have to spend time and mental acuity and, and manual dexterity to open that windless strap. It should instead be staged with the windless strap open. That's how they come from North American Rescue. And please, officers, Always go check your tourniquets right now and open your windlass. Just like any other piece of equipment, um, guys, the tourniquet is, is just that. It's a piece of equipment like your flashlight, your gun, your handcuffs, anything else. So every so often, set a day, one day a week, or start of your, you know, when, you're, when your shift changes from days to nights or whatever, just like changing the, fl the batteries in your smoke detectors, set up a time to check your equipment periodically, and that should include your trauma equipment and make sure you're refreshing your trauma training because if you haven't used it for a year or two or three you haven't been refreshed with this stuff it's a perishable skill and under stress you might forget how to do this stuff so make sure your equipment's in good working order it's properly staged and you have the training you need to be up to date on the latest stuff you need to do for, for trauma uh, treatment like this kind of hard to see here but i do think he did a pretty good job of using the saw technique to get that um to get the tourniquet up to the high and tight portion of the and I'm not going to try to teach you trauma medical here. That's not my mission and I'm not qualified to do that. But please, I think there were some good things here. Staging errors. I think he did get it on there correctly. And the one thing I would recommend from every medical trainer that I know is that when you tighten that, that uh, tourniquet down, it should hurt like heck before you start turning the windlass. You should have that sucker cranked down tight enough that it already hurts. They did a good job of helping their partner here. I think the officer who was shot is stone cold for returning shots in the fight. Let's fix these couple little tiny things. But Mike, overall, man, I'd say these guys really covered their ASP.